This is the plaintiff, Brian Williams. He says he and the defendant were involved in a relationship, lived together until she kicked him out, and now he's owed money and she won't pay. She has a car he paid for, his hair clippers, a phone, and he's suing this shady lady right here and now for every penny of the $5,000 he's owed. This is the defendant, Gloria. She says the plaintiff moved into her house, and it soon became evident the guy had a cleanliness issue. He brought bed bugs into her house, didn't seem to care when she pointed them out, and she soon realized this relationship and living arrangement wasn't going to work out. Bottom line, the car is hers. She also doesn't have his gosh darn hair clipper and owes the man nothing. She's accused of manhandling a lover. All parties, please raise your right hand. If you see it, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn on. Thank you, Douglas. Brian Williams, you are suing Gloria. You've asked us not to mention your last name. For $5,000 that you say Gloria owes you for various items, including pain and suffering, after the two of you parted ways. Tell me, Mr. Williams, what happened here? Yes, uh, well, we uh, met on chat line in April 2015. You know, talked on the phone for a while, talked about her situation where she uh, was staying at a, a home for battered women and uh, spoke about her son who needed something to do, so I... How old is her son? Nine or ten now. How old is your son? He's ten. Okay, go on. And I brought them a, a game for him with a uh, hundred games on, and I brought her an MP3 player. And, you know, it's the first time we, you know, met and, you know, she had uh, trust issues because of the situation with her um, boyfriend. And, you know, we started to talk and, you know, came over a couple of times to, to see them. And we, uh, you know, decided, you know, to, you know, try having a relationship. But we were holding back on the sex thing because of her situation, you know, getting choked and whatnot by her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I talked to her about... Uh, I saw a car uh, that I was going to either buy for my son if he didn't find one because he lived in Florida, or you know for myself. And we went and okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, now I, 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 I just, okay. You're wearing sunglasses because you are um, legally blind. Legally blind. Yes. Okay. And, How are you going to get a car for yourself? Uh, have some. You know, have a licensed driver. Because you know, it's my oh, license. For some, it's for you to own, but somebody else to drive. Yes, you. that's correct. Yes. Okay. Would you say that the two of you were dating? We discussed it, but we never got that basically that far. Okay. It was more or less like a, a tenant, you know, living at a house, basically. Tenant? Wait, wait. You were living at her house? Yes. When did that happen? That wasn't until uh, June. I'm, you, not, I'm, no, I'm sorry, July. July. And you met online when? Uh, in, like, end of May, beginning of April. So were you two, like, kind of talking as... Um, Consenting adults who might sometime date or something? Well, it was a thought. A thought? That was a thought. Okay, so you moved mm -hmm. in together? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Because the rest of us think that that's taking it really fast. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, so you go to look at this car with her. Yes. And what happens? The price was seven fifty or best offer, and, you know, we got the car for five fifty. Who paid uh, for it? Uh, I did. You paid the five fifty. Yes, I gave. I gave. Took the money out of my pocket and gave it to. Do you her. have? Okay. Um, do you have a receipt for the five fifty? Mm, no, it, that would be on the. The car the was sales. put in her name, correct? Yes, because I did not know at the time if I could put, uh, you know, a car in my name being a non-driver. So go on. Okay, we uh, purchased the car. We told the lady we would be back later that afternoon to pick it up, and we you know, came back, got the car put it in um, the backyard at her place, and then the week later on the... You didn't even have a key, correct? No, I did not have a key. So she... it's in her name, in her backyard, and she's the only one with keys? Yes. We got the car. She decided that uh, only she should have the key because the it's in her, her license. Okay. Then we, um, the week later, when I was going, we were going to go and uh, have the you know, do the registration and all that, because she had uh, back taxes and uh, a, a fine on her license that I also paid for, and the taxes had to be paid in cash. 
So I How much did you pay? I paid two hundred dollars, but she took four hundred dollars out of my account. I'm just finding out Gloria. Because I let, let her, you know, use my card and you know it there's a You gave her your password and gave her your card. I gave her my card in the basement or the first floor of the uh, tax place where the machine was, yes. So you moved in? Yes, in I July. moved in. Okay, yes. and how long were you living there before she asked you to move out? Well, it was actually pretty much done in July, but she basically... A couple of weeks. All right, so now tell me what ends up happening. Why is it that things don't work out between you folks? She had her uh, mysterious ways... You know, I, I found out that she was uh, still making phone calls on the chat line and just some of the things that Who she knew? would do. Yeah. Okay. All right. You tell me, what, what was going on here between you two? Regular chatty Kathy, the testimony continues. I'm kind of um, taken by the fact that you're in a safe house and you're trolling yeah, on a chat, I mean, you know, on a chat line to try to meet people. That, that, that seems so, so quick. Like, maybe you should regroup and kind mm -hmm. of, you know, figure out wow. your situation. So, the General can insure almost any car and any driver? We sure can. You know, I wasn't sure about the General when I was younger. Well, we provided low-cost auto insurance for more than 50 years. Hey, I'm not that old. <laughs> At the General, monthly payments are low with immediate online proof of insurance. Get your anonymous online quote with low payments and ride with the General. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the General and save some time! Can't see it, can't taste it, but there's so much more to it. Here's how Ben and Fiber works. Inside us are trillions of good microflora that support digestive health. The prebiotic fiber in Ben and Fiber nourishes them. And what helps them, helps you. Clear, taste-free Ben and Fiber. When you have a cold, you just want powerful relief. Only new Alka-Seltzer Plus free of artificial dyes and preservatives liquid gels delivers the powerful cold symptom relief you need without the unnecessary additives you don't. Alka-Seltzer Plus liquid gels. If you have Medicare, I have three things you'll want to hear. There's an all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan from Humana. It includes Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage, and it may save you money in so many ways. It's all in this book, and it's yours free just for calling. You'll see all the ways the plan might save you money, even on prescription drugs. In fact, Humana Medicare Advantage members can expect to save almost $500 in premium this year through our pharmacy benefit management efforts. And you get all this coverage with an affordable monthly plan premium, and in some areas, no plan premium. Even if you've looked at Humana before, you need to take another look at this plan. We'll send you the decision guide absolutely free, in a slightly smaller size, of course. Discover the all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan that could cut your costs and cover your prescriptions. Call 1-800-669-0739. Or go to HumanaBigBook.com. The savings are too big to miss. These litigants were romantic, moved in together after two months. He got her lots of stuff, he says. She kicked him out, and here we are. Let's listen. I met Brian over the internet, true indeed. At that time, I was uh, in, in a safe house, yes. And I had issues, uh, can I put it, uh, well, domestic violence issues. I, I'm kind of um, taken by the fact that you're in a safe house and you're trolling sure. yeah, on a chat, I mean, you know, on a chat line to try to meet people. That, that, that seems so, so quick. Like, maybe you should regroup and kind mm -hmm. of, you know, figure out well, your situation. The thing was, it wasn't a relationship thing. It was just I mean, communication. I know, but I mean, and then you move them into your house two months later. What do you know about it? Here's him, you know? the deal with that. Mr. Williams had told me that people were taking advantage of him. I'm a certified nursing assistant. And so I'm saying, well, if they're robbing you, you have an empty room. You're welcome to stay. We were just friends. It wasn't a dating thing. And so um, he mentioned about being choked, but Mr. Um, he had a prostate thing and he has erectile dysfunction, so it was no sex. We never kissed. You know, none oh, of that. Okay, okay. Never. I got it. Okay. And so, <laughs> back to the story. Mr. Williams was not who I thought he was. Although he was, he portrayed to be blind, when he broke in through my back door. Wait, when did he break in through your back door? He broke into my back door. It was in August. This was after you asked him to leave? Yes, this was the day, uh, yes, I left. He had, there was stuff on the back porch the night before. Okay, um, so when you left, was he still in the apartment? When I left, he was not there. Okay, so he when, had already left. 
Correct. And then he was supposed to come back to get his stuff that was no, out on the when porch. When he left, I made sure that when he left, he took everything with him. But there was so still when, stuff on the porch. When I came, yes. So right. when I came back from my door house a couple hours later, I found that he, somebody, my door was open. My back door, you could see outside. And I go to go to my back door. He's at the, he's in the room playing Tetris. He's, How is he playing if he's blind? Exactly. Mr. William has walked two blocks around my community. Do you, part, do you, do you have partial vision? Yes, yes he I does. Do. Enough to play Tetris? Yes, yes, he does. She says you broke into mm -hmm. the apartment. Well, she, yes, he did. She Just a minute. She, oh, I'm sorry. she wasn't there and <laughs> did not see me. Well, she says you're not supposed to be in the apartment and the back door was well, broken and you were in there yeah. playing Tetris. Or, did you break in or didn't you? Excuse me? Did no, I, no. I have a simple question. Oh, I'm sorry. It, okay, did you break in mm -hmm. or didn't you? No, I did not. Okay, did you force the door open? No. Was the door open? Mm -mm. Yes. Now, let me just ask you, what, what was the problem? He was in there for a couple weeks and already he, Mr. It was... He was... He brought bed bugs to my house. He came to my house. When they moved in, when he came up the stairs, he put a bag on my lap. Okay, and, and, and I did not know at that time that this man had mad bed bugs. And that's one of the reasons. So when uh, my kids uh, brought the stuff in, my daughter said, Ma, he got bed bugs. He made them pull... Is that your daughter? Yes. I'm sorry. Come on up. How, how did you even see the bed bugs? Um, okay. I mean, you can see them if you're really looking for them. I huh? saw the bed bugs. We went to go pick him up. I was in the back seat with his items. We were getting on the ramp, going onto the highway. The bed bug was in the bag. I looked over, and it was, I freaked out. I don't like bugs. I don't like bed bugs. It came out the bag. I thought it was going to jump on me. I had him pull over the car, and I got out. We killed it. I was scared from there on out. So when we got to the house, I told her about it. He yeah. never said a word. He infested yes, my no. house. No. Uh, and then there was always this smell. And he had some issues. Okay. And um, I keep talking to him about these bugs, these bugs, but he never cared. She killed a bug on his arm that was crawling. He never flinched. Okay. It's like he didn't care. Okay. Um, tell me about this car. He says he's the one who paid for the car. Your Honor, I have the, the bill of sale. Yeah, but that's not my question. Did he hand you the money to pay for the no, car? No, I have my own money. Did he hand you the money no. to pay for this car? No. So according to you, this is your car? Yes, ma'am. Well, here we have a form here from there showing that he's joint signed on. Let me mm -hmm. see that. The registration. Registration. Yes. Well, it's why would he be on the registration if it's completely your car? We were living together at that oh, time. please. Was... You're not yet even no. kissed. No, That's not a reason kids. for him to be on there. There's got to be another reason. It's got to be his funds or his name wouldn't have been on there at all. If it's totally your he, funds and he's just some guy who may or may not live there and didn't live there very long and you don't have a relationship with him, why would, why would his name be on anything at all unless he was involved with the funds? Ms. Judge Julian, when we got together, we got, we did, this was when we were in the beginning process. He was always all there the, helping. All, even less reason for their to be his name on anything if you paid for it. See, the problem is you committed yourself right now. You just said, I paid for it. You mm -hmm. didn't say he gave me a gift. You said, I paid for it. I paid for so it. now if you paid for it, why on earth would you put just some stranger who you just met his name on it if you paid for it entirely? You just want to keep the cars in your name. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So how, uh, what is the minimum time uh, for two people to start dating and then move in together? I say six months. Six months is about a good time. You really get to know someone, spend every day with them. Okay, well, we're gonna start there. Is six months really enough time to get to know who the person is? Probably not. You probably need a little bit longer. 20 years? But, uh, that's a little too long. How long? <laughs> Maybe a year. I'd say a year. Okay, we all agree with that? Yeah. A year, year-ish. Okay, going inside the card room. What are you doing meeting a lady online and, and letting her put the car in her name. Why don't you just wait and don't buy a car till you figure it out? Why don't you rely on your sister or your brother who apparently are there for you when you need them and ask them about that and have them research it? Why are you doing this? I'm the type of person that just love to help people. So I try to help myself and help her at the same time. You see the time. lady next to you? Excuse me? That lady I next to you, right? That's your sister, right? Yes. Do you try to help her? Yes. Okay, well, she doesn't want to be here today. She doesn't yeah. want to have to clean up over bad decisions that you make, yes. right? Yes, that's right. Right. So when you're thinking about who you feel sorry for, I need you to feel sorry for her, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. During the time of June, July, and August, was she driving you around in that car? Were you guys driving the car? Uh, yes, One, a couple of times, yes. Okay. 
Well, who was driving the car the other, the rest of those three months? Because it was three uh, months. She, she was. She, she's had the car. Right, but then what was the point of you having a car? Don't you go places? What, what was the point of buying yes, a car? Yes, I do. Okay, well, so she, when you would go places, in yes. what car would you go? That car? Yes. Yeah, okay. I am not going to order her to pay for the three months insurance um, because you got use of the car during those three months. I believe you when you say that you paid for the car. I do not believe her. There is no reason to add your name on a car unless you had to do with those funds. I am ordering her, since she has possession of the car, to pay you the $550 plus the $336.75 in registration fees. As far as the items that you say that you left there, you're just not in a position to be able to prove that those things were there. You don't have receipts for any of them. It's your word against hers. And you can't just say it and then throw, I throw a number. That's not how it works. You're suing for $3,364.12 of your lawsuit is pain and suffering. Yes. As in what? Uh, you know, don't know what's happened with, with the car. You know, if my name is on it. I don't know if anything's bad has come of it. I was uh, illegally evicted because I paid to stay there the entire <sighs> month. All right, we need to stop, okay? Well, we Here's what's have, gonna happen, stop, stop, there. stop. I believe he was renting. I believe he was renting because even you slipped and said he was renting, okay? And you can't throw the guy out, you can't change the locks, and you and can't throw him out, stop, in the middle of a month, you can't. So that additional 10 days counts for something. Jeez. Between that and the car, I am ordering you to pay the plaintiff. I'm ruling in favor of the plaintiff, and I'm ordering you to pay the plaintiff $1,020.08. That is my judgment. You do not get pain and suffering for making bad decisions. Good luck, folks. Thank you. So in a rather frustrating case for the, uh, for the judge, the plaintiff prevails for $1,020. Gloria, I sense this is a rather... Emotional issue for you. Mm -hmm. I, I thought you were about to break down in tears. He wanted the bad bucks. You know what I mean? I lost everything I had for the bad bucks from him. Trusting him to move in. Don't trust, don't trust some of the handicaps. I That's think, my bottom line. I think you've learned a hard lesson. I there. sure did. Nobody else will ever move, live in my house. I don't care if they got one eye hanging out or whatever. Never. Never. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. You're much welcome. Okay. You Thank have you. to sign a few documents. Now here comes Brian Williams and his sister. Brian, come over here. Let me just say, how do you feel about the outcome of the case, the judge's uh, decision? Uh, it's okay. I, you know, wish it had came out better because I, you know, since August, been in a lot of suffering and pain with the, not knowing the, you know, what where the uh, car is or what it's doing. I think but you've learned a tough lesson, huh? Yes, yes, I have. Yes, yeah. uh, I, you know, it is this woman, you know, uh, be before I even moved in, she's telling, you know, I'm talking to her on the phone. She's telling uh, me uh, she has. Um, we can't uh, do some, the whole case again about, here yes, now. Yes, okay. Just thank you very much. Yes, okay, right. I, I know you've learned something. Sure. I feel like this: if if someone has bed bugs before they move in with me, yeah. you're not coming in my house. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. you know, I don't know about <laughs> that or not. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Harvey? Doug, I don't know how else to say it. We've done the show for a long, long time. Uh, if you think you can buy somebody's love, you are sadly mistaken. Period. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.